The L298N is a dual full bridge rectifier module that can be used to drive speed and direction for one servo or two standard DC motors. Plus it can drive other inductive loads like relays and solenoids. And you can control it either manually with switches or much more efficiently by using microcontrollers like the Arduino. Okay, here we've got the module and I've got it connected to a 12 volt power supply. I've got a little meter here. We can do a little probing around while we're just checking this thing out. Before we do that, I should mention that this module can accept an input anywhere from 5 to 35 volts DC with the recommended amount of being 7 volts up to 12 volts. Because if you input less than 7 volts, the internal 5 volt regulator on this module will not function. And if you input higher than 12 volts, the internal 5 volt regulator will be destroyed. I should say it will be destroyed if you leave a certain jumper installed. So I'm going to show you how to remove that jumper, which disconnects the internal 5 volt regulator. And then you can apply less than 7 volts or greater than 12 volts. But you have to also apply your own regulated 5 volts input in order for the internal circuitry to work on the module. And I'll show all that in the upcoming video. So first of all, let's just check out the 12 volt power supply here. And we can see that it's pretty close on this meter. And we've got the red LED lit indicating that there's a 5 volt source available. So if I put one pin on ground and check out the 5 volt source, I've got 5 volts available there on that 5 volt pin. And if I turn this around, making sure that I don't short my leads out here, you can see that that third pin is plus 5 there. So that's available as an output. When your input is above 7 volts, this thing will make available a regulated 5 volt output that you could use to perhaps run your Arduino or any other 5 volt device. If you input like 7 volts, let me change, let me drop that voltage down to about oh, 5 volts just for fun. So now I've got 5 volts on that. Let's check that. There you go, I've got 5 volts in. And if I compare ground to the 5 volt out pin, I've only got 3.2 volts out now. Because that 5 volt regulator can't deal with only 5 volts in. It has to have a 2 volt overhead in order to create its regulated 5 volts. So that is no good right now. I have to increase that back up above 7 volts. Let's go to 7. I'm at 7.5 volts input now. And let's check that. So I've got a little over 7 volts in, and let's check that 5 volt regulator now. And we got 5 volts back on that regulator. This thing needs 5 volts to run its internal circuitry. So it will take the 12 volts input here, or anything above 7, 7 to 35 volts. And its own internal 5 volt regulator will then supply the regulated 5 volts for the internal circuitry of this module. If you supply less than 7 volts, the internal 5 volt regulator can't function, so you have to apply your own 5 volts, and you have to do two things for that then. You have to remove this jumper, and then you have to apply 5 volts to this pin. So where if you've got 12 volts or 7 volts or more in, this will be an output 5 volts. If you've got less than 7 volts in, you have to input 5 volts to this pin and remove that jumper. Okay, we've got seven volts in, so the five volt out will be just fine. We can run our Arduino or any other five volt device as this as an output. Let's take our jumper off and see what the differences are. Notice the LED went out. Let's see what changed with our voltages. Still 7.5 in, and let's compare the out, 0 volts out, which makes perfect sense because our jumper is gone.
Notice the LED is off, so the internal circuitry is not functioning on this device. We would have to input 5 volts in order to make that internal circuitry work. Okay, let's put the jumper back on because I do not want to input 5 volts. Okay, we've got the jumper back on. Let's double check our voltage. And we've got a nice strong 5 out. And we've got 7 in. So we can run a 7 volt motor off the outputs. And here we, we've got, we can run a motor off this set. The two wires to a DC motor could come off here. Or we could run it off these two outputs. Or we could run it off both of those outputs. And the way that we do that then, we've got some output pins here. And notice there's a jumper over here and there's a jumper over here. And these are what's called the enable pins. Right now, let's see where this is jumpered. Let's see what we've got for voltage on that pin. We've got five volts on that pin. So holding that pin high enables this output. And holding this enable pin high enables this output. Let's see if there's any voltage on those things right now. Nothing out there. Nothing out there. Let's see what happens if we take a jumper off. Seeing as it's easier to get a hold of this one, let's take this one off. And see if that changed the output pins here. So now that we've got the jumper off, let's see what our voltages are on this enable pin. Nothing there, and we've got 5 volts here. We've got a jumper on over here. Let's see what our output is like over here. Nothing relative to ground. Nothing. So even though we have either the enable pin jumpered or open, it does not affect the output here because we have to do some more input to these other pins. What we've got here is we've got enable, and then we've got input one, input two, input three, input four. So three and four would be controlled by this enable set of pins, and they would enable, or they would control this set of output pins. And enable over here, and input one and input two will control this set of outputs. And this enable pin controls these two in one and in two pins. So let's see if we can make something happen here. I'll put a spec sheet up that tells us that if enable A is a zero or ground, the motor is going to be turned off. If enable A is ground, nothing's going to happen. But as you see here, with the jumper on, enable A is high. So then that will enable input one and input two. With the jumper off, let's check that, we'll see that there shouldn't be any, there's no 5 volts on that pin, so output 2 here, or in 3, in 4, nothing can happen there because enable is at ground, 0 volts. So we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going for this output over here. We just want to see what happens when we enable these two inputs. So the jumper there just says, let's enable these two pins. So we can do stuff to those two pins now. Let's see what we can do. If we look at the chart, we can see as long as enable A has got a 1, as long as it's a high, 5 volts, and if we have input 1 at 0 and input 2 at 0, motor A is not going to do anything. Although if we look down 1, we see enable is, is high, input 1 is low, and input 2 is high, means motor A is going to be turning backwards. And if we reverse input 1 and input 2, we put a high on input 1 and a low on input 2, then motor A is on and turning forward. And if we have enable high and input 1 and input 2 both high, if they both have 5 volts on them, then motor A is stopped. We've, we've actually braked that. That's basically the same thing as if we put a 0 on enable A. And then if we look at motor B truth table, we see the same is true for motor B. Let's go with the first choice there. We're going to put a high on enable, and we're going to put a 1 on input 2 and see what happens. So we're going to put 5 volts on input 2 and see if we've got an output voltage 
there. Let's try that. So I'm going to put five volts on input two. And because we got seven volts in, the five volt regulated power is out and available to me. So I am going to use that five volts to make input two high. And I'm just going to put that jumper on input two. And let's see what that did for us. Let's check across these two pins and see if we have something going on. Look at that. We have got seven volts across the output. So if we hook a motor up to the output, that baby's gonna run in a certain direction. And the truth table called it reverse or backwards. You can call it whatever you want. Call it clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's attach a motor to those outputs and see what kind of excitement we have, should we? I just happen to have a little uh, setup here that I've used for something else. Let's turn it this way so you can see that go. And then let's connect that to the output pins. I'm just gonna hold it down. I could waste the time and screw, it, screw these things in, but let's just hold it down to those output pins. And there goes our motor. And that's because I have five volts applied to this. If I take that five volts off, of course, there's no output voltage, so that motor can't run. If I re-establish a high or five volts on input two, we get the motor running in that direction. Now let's put the input on the other, on input one, and it goes the other direction. Try it on input two again, goes in that direction. Input one, goes in that direction. So that's how this baby controls a motor in one direction or the other direction. And then voltage will change the speed of that motor. Let me uh, screw these in so I can do another magic trick here. Okay, let's look at the voltage across that motor. 5.96 volts across that motor. What do we have for an input voltage? Seven volts, 7.2. So you see that regulator drops a couple of volts from seven to six little over a volt to run that regulator. That's why for a five volt regulator, you have to input something higher than five volts because it drops a volt and a half or so. That's why they say a minimum of seven volts in in order to activate that five volt regulator that's on board. So we've got roughly seven volts in. Let me turn that voltage up. Watch the motor speed up. There's roughly 12 volts in. Let's see what we have across the motor. Almost 11 volts. Let's see what we have on input. I can't really check the pin itself, but I can just check the output of the voltage regulator. And that's still at five volts. So we've got five volts on input one right now. Let's see what's on input two, just if we just put our voltmeter on that, nothing, zero. So input two is low, input one is high. And then I'm going to turn the voltage supply down to, I'm going to turn it back down to seven volts and we've got five volts out and a slower motor. So that's how you can control your motor direction and speed by using input one, input two to control direction and speed is controlled by input voltage. And changing the input voltage is harder than changing what's called PWM or pulse width modulation. So we'll talk about that next.